Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of NOG, a history podcast where I share underrepresented historical figures who change life as we know it today. So if you're interested in all things history and representation, please like and subscribe. Be sure to click that little bell to enable notifications so you don't miss future episodes of NOG. All right, let's begin. John Mitchell Jr. was the fighting editor who walked into the jaws of death in Reconstruction era Virginia to spite white supremacists. This is his story. Here, I would like to issue a very clear trigger warning, meaning that the following content may be startling, exceptionally mature in nature, or upsetting to some listeners. Today's trigger warning features racial violence and lynching. John Mitchell Jr. was born in 1863. He grew up in Virginia, though his former home bears no historical marker for how influential he truly was. For black history in America, this was an instrumental year. As you may recall, Abraham Lincoln announced the Emancipation Proclamation, redesignating the status of slaves in rebel states from slave to free. Despite this, the Confederacy would keep Union forces from being able to enforce this declaration. And in some locations, slaves would not learn of their freedom for several years. It wouldn't be until the end of the Civil War, and formally with the ratification of the 13th Amendment in 1865, that slavery would be officially abolished. For more details on that time in American history, be sure to check out Juneteenth, A Celebration of American Freedom. That was an earlier episode of NOG. Now back to John Mitchell. John Mitchell was part of the first generation of black Americans growing up in what is now known as the era of Reconstruction. Here, America is adjusting to life after the Civil War, and quite critically, to life post-slavery. Black children began to grow up with access to education and could learn how to read from a young age. John Mitchell took advantage of these resources and excelled in school. Later in life, he enjoyed a short-lived political career joining the almost 2,000 black men who held a seat in public office during Reconstruction. However, he is best known for battling segregation with his publications as the longtime newspaper editor of the Richmond Planet. The Richmond Planet is one of the most famous black newspapers in Virginia and is the oldest black newspaper in the country. Founded by 13 former slaves, its first publication was in 1882. Two years into production, 21-year-old John Mitchell Jr. took over the reins as editor. For the next 45 years, he would make his mark using his position to bring attention to important social issues. He created both controversy and much-needed transparency in a time where it was dangerous to be black. He was a pioneer in civil rights and calling out injustices. He spotlighted events, businesses, and public figures who were unjust, who were contributing to segregation and violence against black Americans. The newspaper had a large following and readers were moved to action by his pieces. A memorable campaign he ran was in 1904 against a local trolley service. Its policies were prejudiced against black riders. It practiced segregation in its seatings. What did John Mitchell do? He started a mass movement for everyone to forego using the company and instead opting to walk. This mass boycott was so influential that the transport company was forced to close from the lack of customers. He was that influential. He was that determined. His non-violent yet incredibly effective protest created real change. His non-violent approach to challenging the world around him often required brazen tactics. What he is most remembered for today is that in every edition of the Richmond Planet, he covered recent lynchings. Undeterred, and unwavering, Mitchell included in every publication images and names of those lynched across the nation. He made many enemies for his very public callouts, receiving threats frequently. Despite committing these acts themselves, it was somehow Mitchell's fault for publicly calling attention to these horrific murders. The NAACP reports that between 1882 and 1968, 4,743 lynchings were committed in the United States. Over three quarters of these were black victims, and it's widely known that many lynchings went unreported. Experts look at the gross popularity of lynchings, especially in this period, 
as an outcome of whites blaming blacks for their loss of money from slavery being abolished, among other social racial constructs. John Mitchell Jr. saw these atrocious crimes for what they were and used his position to call out these murders and present what they had done to the public. If America wasn't finding them accountable, he would. There is a famous story about John Mitchell Jr. where in 1886 he received a dark threat for his candid coverage. He had been covering the lynching of Richard Walker by a white mob in Charlotte County. John Mitchell had made a scathing editorial, being as blunt as to say those in the mob deserved the same treatment as they had given Richard Walker. Now I'm sure you can imagine how that must have gone over. In a world where angry and unchallenged white mobs were given the chance to perform lynchings on a regular basis, it's not a stretch of the imagination to fear for John Mitchell Jr.'s life for calling them out for their actions, for challenging them, for vilifying them. Shortly after the editorial's publication, John Mitchell received a noose and a threat in the mail. It vowed that if he stepped foot in the county where Richard Walker was lynched, that he would be lynched himself. Now. If you've learned anything about John Mitchell Jr., you may have an idea on exactly what he did next. Armed with two Smith & Wesson pistols, Mitchell takes a train to Smithville, then calmly walks the five miles from the station to the site of the lynching. The entire journey, he is unrivaled and undeterred. He was fearless in all that he did. He used his fearlessness to champion for many blacks who had nobody in their corner, and he changed lives with his publications. Later, in 1895, three black women were accused of murdering a white woman. The entire case was based off of the testimony of one single person. Even worse, that one person changed their account several times. It was widely acknowledged that John Mitchell Jr.'s coverage of the story brought attention to these accused women and that he was an instrumental part in clearing their names. After his coverage, the prosecution dropped the case entirely. This is just one of many times that he wielded words with the Richmond Planet to do good and make radical change in his community, and sometimes on the national level. He gave black America someone to fight for them, someone to remind everyone that this wasn't right. But if he was so influential and so important at such a critical time in black history, then why does nobody know about him? Why did his name fade into obscurity? One reason could be attributed to his reputation in the public eye at the time. Was he scandalous in the traditional sense, exhibiting disreputable characteristics or toting bad habits such as drug or promiscuity? No, he was scandalous for being a black man that publicly and frequently denounced violence and human rights violations executed by whites. While this may contribute to why his name remains a loss from public education, that the passage of time was not kind to his legacy, I think the real answer comes from the overall failed performance of the era of Reconstruction and that any good that was promised was quickly dashed and overshadowed by the cruel and twisted period known as Jim Crow. The era of Reconstruction saw to it a shifting political landscape as the country attempted to adjust to life after the Civil War. There was a number of excellent developments including increased access to education, access to voting, and even representation in governmental positions as we've briefly discussed before. With the 2,000 public official positions going to black citizens in such a relatively short time after the end of slavery, it might have seemed like America was headed in the right direction with developing a society that included and represented all of her citizens. However, the hate and violence that continued to pervade continued to fester, and any growth or change promised by the Reconstruction eventually proved to be effectively non-existent as we roll into the infamous period known as Jim Crow. Here's where it all begins to go very, very wrong. In the mid-1870s, there was a presidential race where neither of the candidates received enough votes from the Electoral College to endorse a presidency. Here, in 1877, Southern Democrats struck a deal. They agreed to support Republican candidate Brother B. Hayes in exchange for the removal of the troops stationed in the South who were protecting black voters. Being a free black man was still dangerous, and without the troops to protect them, voting became lethal. This act of voter suppression naturally resulted in a stark drop in public offices held by black Americans. Immediately, figures from the Confederacy and prominent figures in the ex-slave trade regained power. From here, with the unfortunate help of the Supreme Court, laws and court decisions soon undid any good that the era of Reconstruction had begun. 
effectively repealing the 14th and 15th Amendments. They lost their right to vote and quickly lost many other areas of progress. As you can see, any hope promised by the Reconstruction was quickly replaced by more hate and increased violence. My theory is that John Mitchell Jr.'s legacy was quickly overshadowed by the immediate and detrimental backpedal of civil rights that the United States experienced post-Reconstruction. Was the Reconstruction perfect? Absolutely not. But the violence and hate was highlighted with an edge of hope and a promise of progress that Jim Crow quickly stomped out and sought to extinguish. John Mitchell Jr. was a champion in a dark and changing time with the briefest moment of hope along the timeline of American history that was sandwiched between slavery and Jim Crow. He changed and saved hundreds of lives with his peaceful protesting with the Richmond Planet. But for all of his importance, his old home in Virginia bears no seal honoring him. If you'd like me to focus future episodes on diving deeper into black history or unpacking other topics mentioned here, I'd certainly love the opportunity to do that for you all. Black history is full of strong and often ignored historical figures that all contribute to the human experience and greatly shaped America. Thank you for listening to the story of John Mitchell Jr. I invite you all to engage in the comments below and let me know about your experience listening to today's episode. Who would you like me to cover next on NOG, a history podcast? Go ahead and ask questions in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe. In two weeks, I have a new episode coming out with Nog, a history podcast, so don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with someone who you think would like it. I invite you to join Nog on Facebook and Instagram. Those links are in the description below. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time.